Good evening and welcome to Poor Market Structure. This is your host, Rian Hobson, and we are with Kubus Bank, Kubus Camp, sorry. Um, and look, we have a lot of uncertainty actually in today's economy and actually on the market. We have one, the Chinese property, that is a that is a huge problem. We have two, we have the new variant and a new variant as well. And then we have the Federal Reserve with the tapering story, and we have a fleet of central banks that will actually make comments or actually we all know they're not going to do anything on the interest rates but definitely they're going to do something when it comes to tapering so one is the federal reserve there will be tomorrow and then we have the people's bank of china and then also we have the swiss bank um the, the swiss, swiss central bank that will also have the right decision so for all that uncertainty the charge the chart must come to effect and that is where we have Kubus camp to assist us with that after the break Keep your finger on the market pulse with the News Alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Good evening and welcome back to Bull Market Talk Show. We are with Corvus Kim tonight. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page. There's a link below for markets.com, our sponsor of the show. So please click on the link, register your account, fund it with $250. And please, very importantly, there's a second link there for free classes. Please fill in that as well so that I know I must give you the free classes because there were a bit confusion in the last class. So Corvus Kim will be with us. Corvus, how are you? Around good and you, man. Always a pleasure. Are you well? I'm good. No complaints. Look, there good. is heavy, heavy uncertainty. Um, but please let me start with the oil market. What? Where do you see the oil market with all this uncertainty? Yeah, around it's it's a big week. Um, like it, like you said, it's about five interest rate decision this week. The big one is tomorrow night, that of the Fed. Um, so we're not going to get into any positions this week, not not to get in front of the train. But let's look at oil. I don't see. Okay, you've got my chart there. Yep, I got it. Uh, let's look at oil first of all. So just a tip for 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 all the uh, people that are on the program. I always ask myself, what kind of market are we in? Are we in a bullish or a bearish market? And this is still a bullish market. So I'm still seeing oil going higher into this $84, $88 area. Um, I will not go bearish of oil, but we do not know how deep oil is going to have a pullback. So oil can drop to $60 maybe, but I do see oil ultimately going higher into this $88 area. I will not go against the trend. I will not be bearish on, on oil. I'm still a bull. We just have to wait and see how, how far or how deep this pullback will be. But it's still a bullish market for me. So you expect oil to go to $88? $88. Um, okay, as you said, we are in a bull, in a bull run and it actually yes. makes sense. Um, what the oil price makes it now interesting do you also correlate oil with gold or do you normally don't confuse the two? No, I, I don't look at oil and gold at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. We must remember that gold sometimes, or they say cryptos are also included, but gold is a, is a safe haven um, where oil is not a safe haven. Uh, Japanese yen futures are a safe haven. So, I don't, I don't look at gold and, and the oil together. Uh -huh. um, I look only at oil as a chart, and I look at gold as a chart. So I don't, don't do the correlation between the two. No, not at all. Right. Um, w just another interesting question now that you put it on, on, on oil. Um, you said like oil will go to about $88. Do you think actually with this whole new variant thing that it might actually – give a bit of a pullback, as you said earlier, and then it will jump up to about 88? Yeah, look, look, we are in a corrective phase as of 
the beginning of July. As the beginning of July, I do see oil in, in some corrective phase or, or correction, if you want to call it that. But mm -hmm. we don't, do not know how deep this correction will be now. A very technical level for oil is around $57. Uh -huh. US oil, yeah. So that for me is a, is a good opportunity to get long positions on oil. Um, if it's going to go there, we do not know. But, but if it gets to $57, $58, I will be a buyer around those levels mm -hmm. for ultimately $50 to $84, $88 for oil for me. That is my, my opinion. Perfect, perfect. And just your analysis on gold. Right. So, first of all, we've got the fundamentalists like you, and we've got the technical analysis like us, but um, it will all depend on what the Fed is doing. Right. The, I'm looking at the, at the chart of gold, but I'm always, always say it is gold is dollar dominated. So whatever the Fed is doing tonight, that will determine what gold is doing. Although it is a safe haven, if the stocks mm -hmm. are going to drop dramatically, obviously they might just run to gold. And I see cryptos are on as a safe haven as well. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, long term, I am 100% still a gold bull. Maybe up to $2,200, but that is just long-term view. The same as oil here, and no correlation intended. Uh -huh. um, we do not know <laughs> how, how deep gold is going to draw back. I do st still see this eighty or oh, what's it, $1,600, $1,700 area right. for a possible bottom for gold. And then I'm just going to stay with a bullish run. No reason to get, get bearish on gold. Just going to put this line in for you, all technical analysis. You can see where that line comes uh -huh. in around those levels. Um, I'm still dollar uh, on, on gold bullish. Uh -huh. uh, reason being, we are still very much dollar bearish um, in my view. Mm -hmm. um, it's just way to see how big the pullbacks are going to be. And gold for me is, is still a bullish or buying market. Absolutely. And what your favorite now is what you just said, the dollar. <laughs> now, if gold is bullish, uh, or, and where do you see actually the dollar go? The dollar actually will go. Right. Let's look at this. We Let's look at the, let's do the, the Dixie here, yeah, the dollar index. Uh -huh. Right. I've got one or two scenarios here that can play out. Let's just, just take this off. Right, so there you are. Right, first of all, when I do the technical analysis, I'm always asking myself, why is the dollar bearish like this? We yeah. know of, of um, the printing money, of buying of bonds, that is an oversupply in, in, in the US on the dollar index or the dollar. That is why we started to decline. So if fundamentally... Mm -hmm. We do not change those policies. I will stay with this bearish trend. Now, technically, this is just a corrective pattern. I know this pattern is not the start of a new bullish move, according to me. I'm uh, still a dollar bear. I'm still going lower. And I'm looking on the dollar index for a maximum of this 94.70. Let's call this 95. Uh, past support, future resistance area to be tested. And if those policies don't change tomorrow night, I will still stay bearish on the dollar, which is obviously gold bullish. Ah, so you, so you, you still, uh, regardless, like there's a speculation also with, uh, with tomorrow where they say they might be semi, semi bullish, as they say, um, on, the, on the Federal Reserve policy. So we might see a spike up and then you might see actually it goes down. It's actually funny. It was one guy that I actually follow and he was saying, we might see an increase in the dollar and then afterwards it's straight down. That's exactly what I see. I, I do agree with that. I do see um, a spike, if you want to call it, or sudden move higher mm -hmm. to get the traders trapped and then suddenly the move lower. Now, I don't believe they're going to increase rates yet. Um, yeah. I do believe that they're going to, uh, slow down their purchase um, 
policy, so they don't, they're going to slow down the, uh, the purchases of bonds. But uh -huh. I will go against the trend. If they don't rapidly change what they are doing, uh -huh. now remember, it's also a sentiment. So I think most of the traders think that they will start to, to um, slow, slow bond buying, uh, mm -hmm. that they will increase rates. So the, the, the charts are already, it's, it's, it's brought in already. I mean, the, right. the, 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 the traders are just buying dollars at the moment, expecting the Fed to stop the uh, purchases so, or bond purchases. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's already worked into, into the charts. I think we're going to still be uh, just a spike higher. Um, yeah. If I bring the chart up just now, there is my two, uh, there are my two scenarios that we're going to work with. Just a spike higher and then this decline is still going to come and we're going to look at the euro chart just now. Still yeah. a, a, do, a dollar bear for me, at least to this 88 on, on the dollar index. Oh, nice. But lower for me. Although, if they change those policies, then I will relook really at, at what my charts are saying. Right, right. Because it actually sounds right because for me, it doesn't look that they will do much. Um, they will maybe talk about tapering and say, no, maybe a few, um, a few billions they're going to reduce. I mean, a few billions from 120 billion will not do much different. No. Um, and then they will just keep on pressing the accelerator. Yeah, they will. Um, we must look at the interest rates and uh, the inflation numbers. Uh -huh. And those inflation numbers, it doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't um, give us any indication that they that they can slow down so we we must just have to wait and see what the fed is don't get in front of the fed don't fight the fed that is all what i can say is look at the charts but the fed ultimately will decide what the supply and demand on the dollar is absolutely um Kobus, just before we go to the break um will you open up a trade tomorrow no i'm out for this week uh we are fortunate that we are in a position to not trade for this week um, yeah. I'm not going to trade. There are too many things going on. Fundamental analysis uh, or fundamental announcements. We don't know what those fundamentals will be. We don't know what the outcome will be. I'm not going to trade. Uh, we are very disciplined. So no, no trading for me. Let's take the week off. Let the Fed play the circus and then we can, we can join <laughs> the circus afterwards. <laughs> yeah. um, I will just take a short break and tell me back with some more information with the currencies. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the News Alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Good evening and welcome back to Bull Market Structure. This is your host, Rian Opsen. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page. And then also there's a link below, actually two links below. One, markets.com, find your account with $250 and get your classes absolutely free. And then the second link is a, just a register link for me to know that you registered for the free classes so that I can stay in contact with you. Um, please do actually like and leave your comments and questions for Kubus Camp because believe me, as he just said before the break, He's not going to open any trades this week uh, because of all the central banks that are actually making their decision uh, for this week ahead. I'm back with Kubus Camp with some more currencies, uh, what we will check on Kubus. The, the Japanese yen actually came to light. Um, yeah. That was now for last week. And I saw a lot of traders are actually, although you said you're not going to do anything, but there is traders that will definitely take their chances tomorrow. Um, just for the JPY pairs, especially the British pound and JPY, what do you think what can happen there? All right. I'm going to look at the dollar yen first of all. Um, let's look at this chart long term. I'm going to put in these drawings for you to show you what I'm expecting on here. So overall... I still 
see the dollar yen going into this 120 dollar area or 120 yen rather uh -huh. that is it it's all structures and patterns and i still sure. think somewhere in 2022 i don't know when 2023 i still mm -hmm. see a big decline on the dollar yen into this 92 dollars area but we mm -hmm. know we cannot trade these these big big moves i just know mm -hmm. how the market moves and structures and patterns but for now, while let's get some technical levels here, long term, mm -hmm. while 102 is holding, I'm still looking for the dollar yen to push into this 120 dollar area. I, I want to be a buyer, mm -hmm. short term, just mm -hmm. a pullback for me on, on the dollar yen. But if I want to look at immediate levels that I want to buy, I still feel we might just test this 107 first. There you are. There's all the structures uh -huh. and patches that I've done for you. You can uh -huh. exactly see where the arrows are. Uh, right. It's either uh, uh, drop into this 107 uh -huh. area and then the rally, or then first 11 and then 107 and then the rally. So those are my top options, and I will build my trading plans around those. Oh, that looks that look nice. That is US uh, JPY. So you actually say that it will go first as it will go up and then to 107 on the second draw down, on the second drawing down. That is what I'm expecting around. That is the charts of my trading plans that I work around with. So obviously those things must work out and, and, mm -hmm. and before I enter a trade. So we can do 80% analysis and expect what the market will do. Uh -huh. But according to what the market is doing and around that, what the market is doing, I, I will build trading plans around that and, and get into those. But 107 for me is a, is a good long-term buy on the dollar yen at this stage. Let's see what okay. the Fed does. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole thing, the Fed Reserve. And on the, the favorite, the people's favorite, British Pound and JPY. Why is it the people's favorite? I don't know because it jumps a lot, but I absolutely hate no. it. Look, we we had a short um, short opportunity last week um, around one fifty two. Mm -hmm. That was our trading plan um, last week. That worked out perfectly, but that's what happened. Let's see what can happen here. A few things that can happen here. All right, let's go to a daily chart. Let's take these things off. Let's not get confused. All right. Two things that interest, two or three things on this chart that interest me a lot. First of all, we are against that resistance of 2017. Let's get a straight line here, Quivers. Let's do that. Right. Straight line there. Um, let's use this tool. It's better. Right. So we against that resistance, which is an area that we don't want to buy now. We don't want to buy against a resistance area. Right. Um, Right. The another thing that we must ask ourselves, what kind of market are we in? From the beginning of 2020, dollar bearish, we can see that the pound yen is bullish. Absolutely. So in, in practice, there is no correlation between the pound yen and the dollar. But if we look at the charts, we can see dollar high 2020, uh, pound yen low. So right. if we are about a higher dollar and then the drop we should be talking lower pound yen and then the rally that uh, makes sense yes because absolutely different markets will have correlation and then the correlation will break down and yes we still got a bullish market yes this is very bullish and yes there's some head and shoulders pattern here mm -hmm. that we can use but but i want trade this head and shoulders pattern. There are too many things that, that says this is not going to work out. But Correct. it's very interesting when I when I look at the dollar chart and and, and the pound yen that they are <laughs> basically inversely correlated. So I will, I, will, I will also trade this, the pound yen, according to what the Fed is doing. Right, right. It, it makes actually sense. I didn't even actually think <laughs> of that way. Maybe I'm just not concentrating too much on the chart. Let's see if I can put the two together so that the I viewers the can look at it. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring in this. All right. Both are daily charts. I'm going to circle this for you. 
and I'm going to circle this for you. Mm -hmm. And let's look at this, this vertical dotted line. Can you see it there? Correct, I can. All right, so March 13th is a low on the pound yen, which yep. was the high on the dollar index. We can see that it's perfectly correlated. And from there, the pound yen rallied aggressively to the upside. We got a high on the pound yen, which is a second low on the dollar index. And that's exactly where we are at the moment. Not highly correlated between those two. Never noticed. Never yeah. noticed. Black some Easter. Nice. <laughs> no, that is actually a big one. I never even actually noticed it. Yeah, it's just the eyes. Um, there are no reason for the for the correlation. If if you maybe want to bring in the dollar yen, but yeah. if you just compare the two charts, it's very easy to to read when you put them together. And there's actually nothing, no correlation whatsoever. No correlation. Yeah. Maybe because they are just part of the G7, maybe that <laughs> the correlation <laughs> comes in. <laughs> Thumbs up now, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the last one for the JPY pairs is actually Euro JPY. Euro JPY. All right, let's go to that chart quickly. Let's get this off. Euro JPY, very interesting chart as well. All right. So, again, we can see basically the same as the pound yen from these lows in April, just a rally. I'm just going to walk away from the from the euro yen at the moment. The chart is not clear, but if I want to put my finger in the pie, no trade for me. I'm not. I'm not going to get involved here. Um, I always say when the charts don't make sense, walk away from it. No reasons to push charts. I think there are many other charts that are more clear for a direction. But for now, the immediate, for tonight or so, this chart just tells me a little bit of a drop lower, maybe into this $126 area. Hmm. Um, from there, we can maybe look for a reversal, but I'm not going to get involved with the euro yet. It does not make sense. No charts, and charts, patterns, or structures that I can recognize here. But for now, immediately, it still looks bearish. Yeah, it looks actually a bit bearish. Maybe... Yeah. Um, but as you said, it doesn't doesn't make sense. Look, I don't even bother actually looking at JPY pairs. Look, the, the Japanese yen behave. Once you're on the wrong side with the Japanese yeah. yen, you are done. Definitely done. So <laughs> yeah. I don't mess around with JPY pairs. Yeah, uh, there's just... actually someone, um, LaRue, uh, Bluxem, yeah, I'm so glad I'm listening tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you? Uh, I'm just gonna short uh, take a short break, Kubus, and then we'll be back with the people's and uh, there's another one that's the people's favorite. Just take a short break, we'll be back. Okay. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Good evening and welcome back to Bull Market Talk Show. This is your host, Rian Nobson, and we are with Quibus. Kim, please do drop your um, your questions and do like. Please drop a lot of questions because I still have Quibus here and I'm stealing time with actually Quibus. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page. Um, and there's a link. There's two links below. One is on Microsoft.com. Register your free account on there. And then also, um, there's another link for me to know that you take your free account. It will actually say free account and then just register on that. I will have another currency pair with Quibus Camp. Quibus, maybe this one sits on the top of the MT4s and MT5s. Is the Euro USD? Always good okay. question. All right, let's go to the Euro. And let's see what my trading plan is on this. So, 
highly correlated with the dollar index. Uh, remember that the dollar index or the Dixie is 57% mm -hmm. weighted. So what they do is it's, it's an index that they add six currencies together, but 57% of that is weighted on the dollar, on the euro. That's so 57% correlated between the euro and the dollar index is, is basically inversely what the dollar index is doing. So you can see the chart here is exactly the opposite of what the dollar index is doing. So we're expecting a drop on the euro, which is a rally in, in the dollar. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking for the reversal as the dollar index comes down. I'm waiting for this euro to start to rally again. And my area where I want to buy the euro after confirmation, I must say this, mm -hmm. is between 116 and 112. That box, that yellow mm -hmm. box is an area that I want to look for buying opportunities on the euro. But ultimately, we are looking at the charts, we're planning our trades, and when those levels start to break, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to get into long positions on the euro. Oh, that looks actually quite a good one. And also, Quibbers, um, as you said now, the, the correlation between the euro and the USD, and especially when it comes to the weight as well, um, do you think actually the euro and USD is actually an easy currency pair to trade with? The euro USD, I mean, it's the most traded currency pair um, above everything else. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's quite quite easy to trade, yes. Um, but like I always say, if you look at the chart, it does not make sense. Leave it and go to the next chart. So I don't believe in, in majors or special currencies that you start with to trade. Um, mm -hmm. If you can read a chart, you can trade anything. You can you can buy and sell orange juice futures if you want. So <laughs> you can trade you can trade cows. <laughs> so just read the chart. Read, trade the chart, and, and, and yeah. So the euro or the pound or the or the yen pays all the same for me. <laughs> right. No, I absolutely agree with you. Just for for for. Um, uh, advice for the traders for this week. What advice can you give them for this week? Uh, my advice for this week is to stay out of the market while the Fed is speaking. We do not know in which direction they will take that monetary policies. You can do whatever you want on this chart, but it's ultimately the Fed what, which will decide or will decide in which direction they want to take those policies. And that will determine the direction of the dollar, and we do not know what that direction is will be. So any trading before that is a guessing game. It's gamble. I'm out of all this week. Let the circus run. I will join it afterwards. <laughs> well done. No, look, I'm, I'm with you with that. I will just analyze the, the Federal Reserve and also the Bank of England. But I yeah. think myself that I will not take my chances and try to guess what these no. people will say. Uh -uh. No, that's my that's my that's my opinion as well. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Quivers. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for sharing all your views with us. I highly appreciate it. It's a pleasure, always a pleasure. And you must keep well. And well done to all of the viewers. Good luck, and be very very careful out there. Thanks a lot, Quivers. Lovely evening. Right. Keep well. That was Kubus Kemp with us sharing his views on the market. Um, and as he said, it will be a busy week this week. And I absolutely agree with you. One, we have the Federal Reserve. Tomorrow morning, we have the People's Bank of China. Then we have the Bank of England and also the Swiss Central Bank that will also make a decision. On top of that, you have the South African Reserve Bank that will also make a decision on Thursday. So it will be quite confusing in the market. And please be very careful for this week. As Kubus just said, he's out of the market. Myself, I will just do the broadcasting and see and do my absolute best of what I can do for you. But for my personal account, I'm totally out of the market. That's it from my side for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show. And then I will see you guys tomorrow at the same time. No, at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Bye-bye.